uh, welcome to this module. In the last module what we have seen, we have seen how can we fabricate a piezo resistor sensor on a flexible substrate and that piezo resistor sensor was made out of, of made out of a conducting polymer called P dot PSS right. So, if you see the slide what we have seen is uh, uh, step 1 where we take oxidized silicon substrate, step 2 where we have spin coated PDMS, step 3 where we have uh, form a pattern of chrome and gold uh, and step 4 where we have formed the piezo register. So, these are array of piezo registers 8 in number, this is a single piezo register SEM image of that. Now, what we will see how can we uh, form this particular array of uh, gold pads on this piezo resistor. Now, as you know the if you if I deposit metal on semiconductor it will get short right. So, that is why we have to have insulating material. So, if I see the process flow how it will look like I have a substrate which we have seen in the last module which has PDMS and on that PDMS inter digitated electrodes on which there are piezo resistive sensors P dot PSS these are my let us say inter digitated electrodes or you can not inter digitated electrodes these are actually uh, patterns or contact pads because it is like this right it is like this and then on this I have piezo resistor like this all right. So, it is a chrome gold pattern I will say. So, I will say chrome gold this one would be PDMS and this is silicon. On this uh, substrate what we want? We want to have a contact pad which will sit over here all right which is gold contact pad, but if I deposit gold directly on this then it will get short that is why the next step would be I will deposit insulating material insulating material and uh, this insulating material the pattern would be this x or cross okay this is my insulating material so if i have this one then I, what i will do is I will spin coat photo resist, spin coat photo resist, and this time I will spin coat negative photo resist, negative photo resist. Okay. Then I will load the mask. So, after spin coating negative photo resist, next step would be soft bake, right? After soft bake, so this one would be negative photo resist. Then I have a mask which is my bright field mask and it will only open the contact area this is my bright field mask my photo resist is negative photo resist okay photo resist is negative photo resist bright field mask after that as you know we would expose the wafer with UV light. When you expose the wafer with UV light, since you, are, you, you have used negative photo resist, the unexposed region would be weaker and the exposed region would be stronger. So, what we will have? We will have a wafer with PDMS and interdigitated electrodes. over which there is a piezo resistive sensor on which there are there is a insulating material which is my silicon dioxide. This silicon dioxide we can grow with help of PECVD right this silicon dioxide PE CVD, PCVD stands for plasma and then chemical vapor deposition. And then I will have my photo resist 
like this. This is my negative photoresist. All right. As you see here, the photoresist from this two area got etched, isn't it? So when the photoresist gets etched, then I can remove my silicon dioxide below it, right? And why the negative photoresist got etched from this area? Because we have used bright field mask and the unexposed region for negative photoresist will become weaker right for positive photoresist the unexposed region say unexposed unexposed region if i talk about positive photoresist and negative photoresist the unexposed region in positive photoresist would become stronger and the unexposed region in the photo positive photoresist uh, sorry unexposed region in the negative photoresist we will become weaker. What we have used? We have used negative photoresist. So, the unexposed region is weaker. Next step would be I will dip this way of I will perform hard bake and after hard bake I will dip this wafer in silicon dioxide agent. What is my silicon dioxide agent? Silicon dioxide agent is buffer hydrofluoric acid or BHF. When I dip this wafer in BHF, what will I have? I will have this pattern. Okay because the, the silicon dioxide will get etched. This x pattern is for silicon dioxide right. This is my chrome gold, this is silicon and this one is PDMS. You can have oxidized silicon, silicon that is good. All right, next step is, next step is that I have to, I have to deposit chrome gold on silicon dioxide, but before that we have to remove the photoresist or we have to strip of the photoresist. So, after this next step would be, so, so when you when you uh, expose the wafer and you develop the photoresist you have to perform hard bake. Okay? After hard bake you have to uh, dip the wafer in silicon dioxide agent, when silicon dioxide gets etched the next step would be we will dip this wafer in acetone. When you dip this wafer in acetone what will happen? You will have your photoresist stripped off from the wafer. Next step is that you deposit chrome gold, again you deposit metal chrome gold right. And since chrome gold is shown by dot pattern we will perform, we will use same uh, pattern ok. Now, next step would be I will spin coat this one. So, let me remove this particular uh, or let me make it short. So, it becomes easy. Okay. So, next step would be after I, I have deposited chrome gold using my PVD method physical vapor deposition. The next step is I will spin coat positive photoresist alright, spin coat positive photoresist then perform soft pick, then I will load a mask and the mask will be such that it will have a pattern like this and like this and this. So, what is have having? I am saving my gold from the contact pads which you can you can see here in the pattern which is my mask ok, this is my mask, this is my mask and I am saving the or not allowing the photoresist to get exposed from this region. Since I want to protect my gold below this region and this region will form the gold pad, will form the gold pad. So, after this I will expose the wafer with UV light, expose the wafer with UV light then perform photoresist developer. Now, what uh, then, then perform photoresist developing. So, photoresist 
will get developed from the area which is exposed and the unexposed region would be stronger. Why? Because this time we have used the positive photoresist. correct. So, what will we what we will have? We will now have a photoresist. which will be protected in this region, on this region and this region. This is my positive photoresist. correct. Next step is I will dip this paper in gold agent, then rinse it, then I will dip. So, after this of course, uh, there is a hard bake, hard bake 120 degree, 1 minute hot plate followed by dipping the wafer in gold agent then rinsing the wafer, then dipping the wafer in chrome agent, rinsing the wafer and when you do that what you will have? You will have you will have this pattern where the chrome gold got etched where which uh, in the area which was not protected by the photoresist right. This is chrome gold. Next step is I will dip this wafer in acetone. When I dip this wafer in acetone what will happen? The photoresist will be stripped off. When photoresist gets stripped off my wafer that I have uh, patterned it like this will look similar to my pattern number 6 and this particular platform right. So, what we have done? We had a substrate with PDMS and P dot PSS as strain gauge on which we have insulating material which is step number 5 right and then we have performed a photolithography and remove the contact then we have deposited chrome gold and we have patterned to form the gold pairs. What is the next step? Next step is to form SU8 pillars. Next step is to form SU8 pillars. So, on this, what will I do? I will now spin coat, right? I will now uh, uh, rather than spin coat, we will grow now ok. For our step is to have SU8 right SU8. So, what we will do? We will spin coat, we will spin coat SU8 because SU8 is a polymer right and it will act as negative photoresist. So, I will spin coat SU8 onto this particular substrate which we substrate this substrate this one alright. So, when I spin coat SU8 on this substrate SU8 is a negative photoresist. What I, what I want that there should be SU8 pillar on each of this gold pad like you can see here right. I want to protect SU8 on the gold pad, SU8 is a pillar alright. I will tell you why we are making this pillars ok, I will tell you. So, when we coat SU8 using a spin coater the next step would be to protect SU8 only in the center. So, I will load I will uh, of course, for, uh, perform the soft bake in SU8 you know again I am telling here please pay attention photoresist positive and negative SU8, SU8 acts as a negative photoresist. What is the difference? We spin coat, spin coat this also spin coat. Next step soft bake 90 degree 1 minute hot plate, soft bake this is done at 65 degree for time on hot plate this time depends on the thickness of SU8 alright. Then there is a UV exposure then developer and then hard bake, hard bake is done at 120 degree centigrade on hot plate for 1 minute right. In this case 
65 degree soft bake, then UV exposure, then hard bake, again temperature is 95 degree centigrade, time depends on the thickness of SU8 on hot plate. Then we will form developing, you see this is the difference, UV soft bake, UV exposure developer and then hard bake, here soft bake, UV exposure, hard bake and developer that is a difference. Okay. So, that you have to remember when we talk about SU8. So, SU8 x is a negative photo resist that means, the unexposed region will be uh, weaker and the exposed region would be stronger exposed to what exposed to UV light right exposed to UV light. So, now we will have a mask we know that SU8 x is a negative photo resist and we want to protect SU8 in the center. So, what we will do? We will use a bright field mask and by using bright field mask what we are doing? We are protecting the layer of SU8 which we do not want to get develop in the SU8 developer. Okay. So, how does it happens? Because SU8 would is negative photo resist. If SU8 is negative photo resist then the area which is not exposed area which is not exposed right will be will be weaker correct area which is not exposed will be weaker. So, if I use this mask will it work will it work it will not work because we are removing SU8 from this side which is not what we want we want pillars here. So, our mask should be having pattern like this. Correct? The area which is not exposed will be weaker because SU8 works similar to negative photo resist. Now, if I use this mask and if I expose UV the photo resist to UV light what will happen if I develop this wafer I will have silicon wafer PDMS interdigitated electrodes strain gauge right then insulating layer right insulating layer is our SiO2 and this is also our metal contact pad. And now, we, when I say interdigital electrodes it does not mean like it is interdigitated it is actually the uh, contact electrodes let us say it is a contact electrodes all right. On this what you have is uh, you have gold pad here right. So, you have gold pad here and on this now you have SU8 which is exposed uh, with a UV light and this is the mask. So, if we use this pattern then we will have SU8 on the gold pad. So, SU8 will stay here this is my gold pad these are contact pads contact pads then silicon dioxide contact pads again this one would be PDMS this is my silicon. So, what we have here is the one which is similar to this one. Okay. But 
then what is the role of this? What is the role of this SU8 pillar? Now, you understand that if I apply a force, if I apply a force to this area, right, then SU8 pillar will act as a force transducing mechanism. So, the force will be applied to the strain gauge through SU8. Another point is I want this SU8 pillar to be conductive. Why? Because you see here, if I have gold pad below it, right, and if the SU8 pillar becomes conductive, if it becomes conductive, then this together SU8 pillar and gold pad will act as electrode 1. I will tell you what is the role of electrode 1. Okay. If the SU8 is conductive, SU8 along with gold pad will become electrode 1. All right. Second role of SU8 is when I apply a force, then this force will reach to the strain gauge, which is my piezo resistor, right, which is this one piezo resistor P dot PSS through the through SU8 pillar through SU8 pillar. Okay. Now, how it will bend we will see how this will bend and how uh, when you apply force because this silicon substrate here right. So, if I apply force silicon will not bend and that is why I do not want silicon. So, I will remove silicon at some point of time, but until here I hope that all of you understood right. Next step what is the next step? Now, we have to make SU8 conductive and for that if you remember I have taught you uh, a process called lift off technique. Right. So, let us use our lift off technique and coat this SU8 with a metal. So, that SU8 and the gold pad below SU8 will become electrode 1. Okay. So, let us see here in the slide. So, you have this particular thing right. So, I will draw it here again it becomes easier and we will start from there. So, again I am repeating please focus here you have silicon substrate you have PDMS on silicon substrate all right. This is your PDMS this one is your silicon then we have in we have contact pads or contact electrodes then we have we have here P dot PSS strain gauge right. Then we have insulating material which is my silicon dioxide all right. So, this one is silicon dioxide this one with P dot PSS, this one would be contact pads all right and then I have here gold pad on which I have SU8 pillar, this is SU8, this is gold all right. Now, what I want? I want SU8 to be conductive. So, we will use lift off technique coat the SU8 material and in lift off technique what we will do? We will coat everything with photo resist and this will be our positive photo resist. Okay. So, uh, let me use this design for positive photo resist okay. and, and this is positive photo resist. Now, after this we will open a window only in this region and this region we will save the photo resist. Okay. So, what we will do we will you after positive photo resist we will perform soft wake after soft wake we will load the mask and load mask such that we will <coughs> protect the positive photo resist in this area and the center area which is having SU8 we will not protect photo resist. So, this photo resist uh, you see the area is little bit bigger than the 
uh, SU8 area. Okay, the the opening, the window opening, is slightly wider than the SU8 area. Okay, this is your mask. Which kind of mask? Bright field mask. All right. Next step, you know, you have to expose the wafer with UV light. UV UV light. Right. After that, you have to develop the wafer, you have to unload the mask, develop the wafer. When you develop the wafer, what will happen? Since there is a positive photoresist, the area which is not exposed will become stronger. The area which is not exposed will become stronger, the area which is exposed will become weaker. So, now you can see that we have positive photoresist. We have positive photoresist, right? And here we have opened the window. This is a window that we have opened. Correct. Now what we will do? You know, we will deposit gold or a metal everywhere. Chrome gold, right? As usual, chrome gold everywhere. And then the next step is we will dip this wafer in acetone. If I dip this wafer in acetone, what will happen? Acetone will strip off the photoresist, right? Because it is a po positive photoresist stripper. When it strips off the photoresist, it will lift off the metal above it, and the metal where it is directly deposited on SU8 pillar will remain intact. That means that when I dip this wafer in acetone, what will happen? My photoresist will get etched from everywhere like this. And I will have my metal coated on the SU8 pillar, my metal will get coat on SU8 pillar. Now, you see you have a gold pad right at the bottom over that there you had SU8 and now SU8 is coated with metal. That means, SU8 and gold pad together will become electrode 1, you got it. So, now what we have? We have a strain gauge made up of P dot PSS, we have a electrode which is made up of gold pad and SU8 which is coated with metal that is thus SU8 becomes conductive. And Next step would <laughs> sorry would be to strip off the PDMS. So, if I strip off the PDMS from the silicon substrate, what will happen? This will happen. So, now what I have? I have a flexible sensor on which there is P dot PSS integrated piezo resistive materials or piezo resistive sensors and I have electrode 1 which is formed with the help of SU8 which is conducting on gold pad. And the strain gauge which is made up of P dot PSS is separated by an insulating material which is silicon dioxide from the electrodes. So, electrode and P dot PSS is separated by silicon dioxide in between. So, there is no shorting all right. When you perform this then you see we have after 6 we have now coated the uh, we have deposit we have spin coated SU8 and pattern SU8 pillars. Then with lift off technique we have uh, coated gold right which is 8 and finally, we have stripped off the uh, PDMS from silicon substrate. So, it will become a flexible sensor as shown in this schematic all right in the sensor photos if you see this is a flexible sensor here as well as here all right if you see this particular uh, photo then you will understand that uh, there are three contact pads why three contact pads two contact here one and two two contact for this and one contact for your su8 pillar like this line right so one contact for this another thing you will observe so it is one two and three right that is why if you see here this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3, 1, 2 and 3. 
Another thing that you need to observe is that the lines are not straight, these are wavy lines like this you see the wavy lines is not it. Why it is wavy line why not straight because if I have straight line if I flex the since the material is flexible there there would be lot of stress in the film and film will get cracked. To avoid crack we have designed the contact pads and the connecting lines in this particular fashion. So, all the things that we have discussing it is right in the center of this particular sensor all right. So, uh, we have 8 piezo resistors and we have 8 electrodes right electrodes means S u 8 which is conducting over gold pad this is our one electrode same way there are 8 electrodes as you can see in this particular figure right. So, uh, the uh, the center like what we were saying right has all the uh, sensors right including your uh, 8 piezo resistor and your 8 electrodes all right. Now, let us see how can we use this flexible sensor for understanding the phenot or you can in another terms technical term is phenotyping tissue properties phenotyping uh, we will do two types of phenotyping one is the electrical uh, understanding electrical signals and the mechanical properties. So, let us see how can we use this now you see here this electrode that we have fabricated right the flexible one which is this one is connected. So, there are 8 of those right like this 8 of those right that this is the sensor. Hmm. This is connected to a cone you see here to a cone. So, the tip is on this side all this uh, 8 uh, that you see uh, SU8 pillars would be on the bottom side right uh, and there is a cone like this right and a sensor is connected these are all the connecting wires that you can see on this particular uh, figure right. And now this is pressing something right and what is the something something is there are contact pads on the glass contact pads on the glass what does it mean you have this structure on the glass all right what is this? this is a mesh structure m e s h. So, if you see this one these are micro grid or mesh for holding tissue core. So, if I load tissue on this right if I load tissue on this like this this is the figure correct. How to create this simple it is a one step photolithography technique right how to create this this is on the glass slide okay? like this on the glass slide there is a mesh how can we create this simple you see you take a glass slide glass then on that you coat metal which is your chrome gold then you spin coat photo resist positive photo resist then you use mask bright field mask something like I am just uh, showing a representation representative diagrams right bright field mask then you expose the wafer with UV light UV light you expose the wafer after exposing wafer you develop this glass wafer when you develop the glass wafer what you will have you will have your chrome gold and your photo resist protected in the area which was not exposed since it is a positive photo resist right. Then you dip this wafer in chrome etchant followed by D i rinse then gold etchant followed by D i rinse right. When you do that what will happen? when you perform that particular process then you have chrome gold etched from the area which was not protected by positive photo resist.
right and the area which was protected by the photoresist will be saved or protected. Next step you know right. So, after developing a four size hard bake then you uh, have to do chrome gold you, you have to remember the photo uh, photolithography steps. Okay. Now, if I dip this wafer in acetone if I dip this wafer in acetone what will happen if I dip this wafer in acetone then photoresist will strip off and I will get the pattern and this pattern is this pattern. Okay. This much is easy now you understand that when I am pressing my this is, this is a cone right which is connected to a micro manipulator as you can see here and this on this cone there are 8 pillars right 8 pillars are there. So, if I uh, select a different color like this there are 8 pillars pressing this tissue all right and this is the breast tissue core on microgrid. What will happen when I press this tissue with the help of the micro manipulator you see here MP285 micro manipulator. So, this this cone is connected to a glass slide this glass slide is connected to the micro manipulator micro manipulator 285 MP 285. Okay. So, when you indent it what will happen when you indent it depending on the elasticity of the tissue the sensor will bend and this bending of sensor is this sensor right. So, it is a flexible sensor. The, so, if you if I just uh, use one rectangle to represent sensor when I apply a force the rectangle will bend like this since it is a PDMS material right this is a PDMS material. So, when it bends on applying of force what will happen there is a change in resistance because of the piezo resistor which is your P dot PSS right. And now if I apply a voltage this is a conducting material right this is will be your electrode 2 electrode 1 you already know this is your uh, electrode 1 correct electrode 1 is your SU8 uh, material with your AU pad and electrode 2 will be the bottom electrode on which you are uh, loading the tissue. Now, when I apply a voltage between electrode 2 which is the bottom electrode and electrode 1 which is your SU8 pillars with your gold pad what will happen depending on the resistance of the tissue uh, the current will change right. So, if I apply voltage between electrode 1 and electrode 2 the, the current will flow depending on the resistance of the tissue. So, now we can measure the elasticity by, uh, by, by pressing the tissue and we can also measure the resistance of the tissue this is the advantage of simultaneous measurement of electromechanical pro mechanical properties of tissue and you can see here in this in this data that for a normal and for the IDC which is invasive ductal carcinoma the elasticity for the no normal is higher compared to uh, invasive ductal carcinoma and the resistance of the normal is low over compared to invasive ductal carcinoma. We can also learn about ethical uh, ep epithelial and stromal regions same way for IDC and normal. Here you can see there is an inverted microscope and inverted microscope is used so that you can see the tissue where when displaced on the microgrid. Okay. So, this is the last slide of this particular module in the next class we will see uh, how can we design one chip which can also when it can not only do electrical and mechanical, but also do all can also perform the thermal properties thermal characteristics or also sense the thermal characteristics that means that it will measure the uh, stiffness or elasticity it will measure the resistance and it will measure the thermal conductivity all three things here it is electrical and mechanical there will be electrical mechanical and thermal and we will see and that we will design on the silicon chip again for understanding three properties of tissue which is electrical mechanical and thermal we will we will we'll use the few uh, you know videos to understand explain you what is what is breast cancer and what exactly what are the types of breast cancer uh, and how it is different uh, same way when you talk about prostate cancer it is also different right uh, same way when you talk about the brain tissue is different liver tissue is different stomach tissue is different can we use electrical mechanical and thermal modalities in addition to the existing biomarkers for better diagnosis of a disease that is our idea this is a biosensor or you can say sensors right all right so i'll see you next class with uh, more interesting uh, fabrication of a biochip which can do three properties simultaneously till then you take care bye